How are we doing tonight? Praise God. Who's, who's blessed to be in the place? Amen. I can tell that you are. Well, we're going to get right into the Word of God. Is that all right? Somebody say, let's get right to it. Praise God. So, so tonight is week three um, of this series that has been changing my life. I don't know about you. Uh, and, and it's called, the series is called what? Warning. Let's stop right there. So, 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 so in other words, warning means if you ignore this, you're going to have a problem. Talk to me. Well, warning means pay attention because what comes next either bless you or not bless you. Amen? And, and so, so, so we've been on this journey. This is our third week as we're walking through this series called Warning. What does it say? humbled or humiliated. What's the last part? You decide. And, and I love those words because oftentimes we think, oh, well, I know what humility is. I know what pride is. Well, we're going to find out based on God's word that we actually probably don't know everything. Amen. And, and, and even when we see the word humiliated, some of us think that that means people are making fun of you. We're going to find out that that's not what God means and that's not what that means. And when we begin to get to the root of what God has for us to understand, freedom is going to be the end result. Who's believing God for some more freedom up in this place? Amen. And, and, and just to remind you that 2018, the beginning of this year, we declared this the year of what? Of momentum. Uh, and how many of you know that we found out that whenever God moves, there should be what? A greater expectation. And so for the rest of the year, the Lord has been uh, instructing me to begin to, to minister to you uh, on things that will allow you to have a great fourth quarter. Who knows what the fourth quarter is? Amen? See, 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 the fourth quarter is where the game is decided, okay? How many of you know, even if you fall down in the first, second, and third, as long as you got the fourth quarter, God says, look, I don't care how you start, I care how you finish, Amen? Could, could, could somebody be honest and say, you know, first, second, third was kind of shaky, but, but I'm going to finish strong. Amen? My hands raised first. So come on, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 23, and, and we're actually going to hear from the words of Christ. We'll start with him. Matthew chapter 23, uh, verse 12 and 13 in the Amplified Version. And, and, and let's read together. It says what? It says what? Whoever does what? Exalts himself. Watch this. So whoever means what? Amen. Whoever means we're not discriminating up in here. I don't care whether you're black, white, right? So, so watch this. He says what? He says whoever exalts himself with what? With haughtiness and what? Empty pride. And that's what we're going to find out. And for those of you that remember uh, the, the very first expression of pride in the garden, y'all remember the very first expression of pride in the garden after man fell was when the Bible says that Adam and Eve, after they knew that they had fallen, that they realized that they had disobeyed God and the glory that was on the inside of them was no longer covering them. How many of you know that God's always desired for what's in you to cover you? Talk to me now. And, and the scripture says that, that once, once they realized that we're naked, watch, they never had on clothes. They lost God's glory on the inside that covered their nakedness. And the Bible says once they realized this, that we saw the first expression of pride. And the Bible says that they actually went and they got leaves and they covered up their nakedness. And we're always going to realize that the greatest or, or pride is always an expression of a cover-up. Now hear me. So, so whenever we're operating in pride, we're always covering up something that is inadequate. Talk to me. You know, a lot of folks be, you know, all puffed up. And, and actually, that's what pride is. It's a puff of air, but ain't nothing in there. And, and, and we're, we're going to realize and we're going to understand as, as Jesus is saying, he says, watch this. Whoever exalts himself with haughtiness and what? And empty pride. Watch this shall be humbled. What does he mean? Shall be brought low. It says what? And whoever was, does what? See, and, and we're going to find out today as we we're continue that being humbled or being humiliated is your decision. Okay? Some of you think that people can humiliate you. We're going to find out, no, they can't. Okay? You're also going to realize, you know, some people think that they can lift you up. 
not if you ain't God, okay? And so, so we're going to realize that humility or humiliation is always a choice. We, we learning anything already? Watch this verse. Keep going. He says what? So therefore what? Whoever has a what? Look at this. In, in, in other words, he says, look here. Who, whoever's opinion is an, uh, lines up with mine. See, that's what he's talking about, modesty. Because how many of you know the truth doesn't go outside of the lines? See, that's what pride is. Pride is going outside of the truth. Talk to me, guys. And, and we found out that, that pride actually has two faces. There are people, you know, who feel low and don't nobody like me and, and I ain't no good and, and I, I, I can't never be good and, and I'm depressed. And how many of you know you just went outside the line? You know why? Because the Bible says, truth says, no, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, you weren't made without purpose. You were made on purpose. And how dare you get outside of the truth and think that you are less than who I made you to be? Y'all y'all hear me? And, and so he's saying here, he said, whoever has a modest opinion, the, the modest opinion is truth. And likewise, again, the other face is, is, is haughtiness. In other words, when, when, you, when you think that, you know, that you don't put your pants on one leg at a time. You know, you just levitate and put them in because, <laughs> you know, you're nice like that. Well, well the reality is, is you done stepped outside of the line. No, nah, dog. If we roll back the tape, no, nah, you put them on one at a time just like everybody else. You're not better than who God says you are. Get back in the line. Somebody say, tell your name, say, get back in them lines. Watch this. It says what? Whoever has what? A modest opinion of himself. Watch this. And you're going to notice that your behavior goes along with your opinion of yourself. Mm -mm. Come on. Y'all hear me over there, worship team? That your behavior goes along with your opinion. Matter of fact, if you look at their behavior, it's because of their opinion. Mm. Come on, talk to me. Look, watch this. He goes here. It says, what? whoever has a modest opinion of himself and what? And behaves accordingly shall be raised to honor. Come on, let's read our introduction. Oh, verse 13. Uh-oh. Here's the warning. Somebody say, here's the warning. It says what? But what? But whoa. Tell your neighbor, say whoa. How many of you know we, we, we need to do that more often? We, we really do, especially as believers. When, when you see expressions of pride... When you see your brother or your sister go outside of the lines, you should just tap them. Whoa. You, you want to know why? Because something, when you get outside of the truth, you're actually outside of purpose and protection. You hear me? Y'all talking to me? When you get outside of the truth, you're outside of your purpose. And you can't be protected. And you need to just start tapping folks. That, how, about, how about that'll be our little family church word? How, how about if we do that? When, when, we see, when we see expressions of pride, just say, whoa. You know, when, when we see somebody, you know, all depressed and, oh, the word, the word ain't true for me. You know, I ain't never won nothing. You know, last time I checked... Somebody gave his life for you. No, Y'all not hearing me. So let me, let me just give you one word. Whoa. How we doing? We all right? It says what? What? But woe to you who? Woe to you scribes and Pharisees. Watch this. Woe to you people who think you know more than what he said. Talk to me. I'm, I ain't scared of none of you. See, 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 that's what pride is. Pride is when you think you know more than what he said. And, and, and you'll find out that whenever you get outside of the truth, that next word, he said, woe to you, you scribes and Pharisees. And what did he call them? Pretenders. Because how many of you know that when you get outside of the truth, you're in no man's land? In other words, you're in make it up land. I know. I know. Did I make this up or is this what he's saying? It says what? But woe to you, scribes, and what, Pharisees? What are you? You're pretenders. You are hypocrites. A hypocrite. Someone say hypocrite. The word hypocrite or hypocrite is the word actor in the Greek. It, it means, watch this, you have to pretend because once you get outside of the truth, you've got to make something up. You've got to put on your costume. How many of you know But 
when you wear that costume, everybody knows it don't fit you. Y'all, y'all hear me? Like, wait a second, that, that's supposed to be a muscle cut. That ain't, you know, you ain't supposed to have wrinkles in that. You're supposed to fill that out. How many of you know you, you can never fill out the costume you're pretending because it wasn't made to order? Who God created you to be was made to order. How we doing? Is this all right? I'm, we just flown. How we doing, Dougie? We doing all right, Dougie Fresh? It says, watch this, but what? But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. What does Jesus call us when we do this? Pretenders, hypocrites. Why? Now, why? This is amazing. It says, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. When you act like somebody that you're not, people can't see the God that he created in you. And guess what? People can't even see the kingdom of heaven. People can't see that God exists. Do you know people are supposed to know that God exists when you just be you? And when you're pretending to be somebody that you're not, and how many of you know most people are pretending because they're hurting? You you, you got outside of the lines of truth because you, you didn't believe that the truth was true to you. Come on now. And watch this, and we say this all the time, and you know when you got hurt, just keep look straight. When you were little, when you were a child, when you were trusting, and somebody broke that trust. God didn't break that trust, but somebody broke that trust. And you said, you know what, I got to put on a costume. I can't, I can't. that's why I said tonight, when we're talking about pride, we're talking about not trusting. Watch this go. It says what? But what? But woe to scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites. Why? For you shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. And it says what? For you neither, for what? For you neither enter yourselves, nor do you allow those who are about to go in to do so. Why? 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 Because when I'm operating in pride, when I, when I get outside of the lines, whether I'm thinking too low or I'm thinking too high, I'm not even in the kingdom myself. Watch this. Now, I'm not saying you're not saved, but you're not living the life. Come on, talk to me, guys. Some of you have, have decided to live the low life when you were born in the high life. Some of you think that your life is higher than the life that he says is the highest. Come on, talk to me. Let's go. Watch, let's go. It says what? Here's our introduction. It says what? God what? God wants what? God wants others to see you blessed and what? And to know that he is with you and the source of your blessing. This is really important. Do, do you know that's why I said, that's why the scripture says, look, you're hypocrites because the way that you're conducting yourself and your belief system and your lifestyle that's connected to what you believe Watch this. It's actually not allowing people to see that God is the source of your blessing. How are we doing? Let's read. It says what? What? The greatest insult to him is when what? Is when the man or woman he created, he created us to be exalted by him. Watch this. He he created you to be the best version of you. How many of you know you... You can't add to perfection. And when you add to perfection, it's called pride. Y'all hear me? When when, when you say, oh, it's not good enough, it's pride. Oh, I need to add something to it because it's not good enough. It's pride. Let's read. This is what the greatest insult to him is when what? Y'all ain't reading with me. It's what? Just one person's reading. The rest of y'all feet hurting because I've been stepping on for the past 10 minutes. It says what? The greatest insult to him is when the man and the woman he created for exaltation decides to try, I'm going to do it myself, God. I don't need to live by your word. I can make up what I think truth is. And watch this. As a matter of fact, I saw somebody with this shirt on yesterday. It says, truth is truth, even if you don't believe it. Talk, talk, to, <laughs> talk, talk to me. See, and the scary part is pride can be so damning that you don't figure out the truth until it's too late. Y'all hear me? Watch this. Let's keep going. It says what? Uh, Boom. What? This is what? This is called pride. And what is God? How does God feel about pride? 
And the reason why he hates pride, because it doesn't allow you to live your life. Come on, let's read. He says, well, God hates pride, and pride is dangerous. Watch this. Especially in the lives of believers. And I explained it already, but it says what? It says, Jesus taught that when a believer walks in pride, they become a what? They become a roadblock that hinders others' ability to see and experience the kingdom of God. What's that next word? Warning. People who fail to humble themselves will be humiliated. Come on, here's our definitions. Did I lose anybody yet? Are y'all, are y'all mad? Y'all mad? Y'all, how we doing? We, st- we still in there? We hanging in there? Come on, here's our definitions, and we'll get into, because today we, we're, we're, we're talking about the expressions of pride. Uh, la- last week we defined it and got into number one, and today we'll get to number three. But let's read. It says what? Pride is what? Deceiving yourself. Pride is what? Believing that you can do a better job with your life than God. Hey, 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 Lord, you know what? Uh, you missed the spot. Hey, 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 God, you didn't give me enough. Talk to me. That's pride. How many of you know, even if it's not perfect to you, it's perfect to him? You want to know why? Because you're here for a purpose. And you'll never know till you reconnect to him, until you get out of pride. As I know, some people, you know, that, that, that struggle with purpose. One of the things that can cause you to struggle with purpose is wrestling with pride. Because pride stops you from seeing the kingdom. Y'all hear me? Pride stops you from seeing all the wonderful things that he has done, and instead you focus on what he has not. How we doing? Come on, let's read. It goes on. It says what? Uh, Deceiving yourself, believing that you can do better job with your life than God. Pride exalts self above God's desires. That was our definition. Come on. And, 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 and I want to stay here for just a minute. And we, we talked about humiliating. It says what? To make, to feel ashamed of what? See, this is important because a lot of times we think that, that humiliation is external. No, no. Humiliation is only internal. Okay? Now, guess what? People on the outside tap into what has already happened on the inside. How, how are we doing? Come on, let's read it. It says what? Humiliate means to make feel ashamed of yourself. How? By injuring your self-respect or your self-love. Guess what? If you don't know who loves you, you ain't going to love you. Come on, guys. If you don't know, come on, hear, hear me, R-E-S-E-C-P, are we what, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, <laughs> Dell State. <laughs> if you don't know, now I, I want to mess with you here, and this is true, this is deep, if you don't know who respects you, come on, can I talk to you for a second? If you don't know who respects you, what are you talking about, Pastor Ted? God respects you. What are you talking about? God respects you so much that he gave you a will he won't override. Talk, talk to me. He, he gave you a will that he won't override. He says, if you don't want me, then you don't want me. Even though I want you, I'll respect that. But watch this. But when you find out that God loves you so much, he respects you so much that he won't override your will, it should cause you to start respecting you and loving who respects you. It also enables you to not settle for less. When I know God loves me, when I know God respects me, hey, last time I checked, my name was Theodore, nicknamed Teddy. Anything else ain't my name. Oh, y'all, y'all don't hear me. I'll go over here. See, and, and, and as a matter of fact, if I can just play around with you for a minute, the word Theodore that I used to hate, I looked it up. I was like, you know, people are Alvin, Simon, Theodore, you know, he Teddy Pendergrass. People, watch this. And here's the funny part. That used to humiliate me, but, it, but all they did was they, they found the empty area. They didn't humiliate me. They found the area that was already humiliated. Why? Because I didn't know the truth. Y'all, y'all hear me? And then I looked up 
Theodore. Sound like an old man. And found out when you say it slow, it's two Greek words. One is Theo, other one is adore or adore. Theo means God, adore means love. My name means God's gift or God's love. I'm loved by God, I'm God's gift. I don't care what you call me. I don't care how you think about me. I found out I'm loved and respected by God. He even put it in my name. And if you don't call me my name, I won't answer to it because I know my name. Try to humiliate me if you want to. I'm not humiliatable no more. I would break this if I didn't pay for it. But since I pay for it, I'm not going to break. This is a... The, the Lord told me to stay here for a second because some of you can't even hear God because you're so humiliated on the inside. And you even, you even blame people for your humiliation and know your humiliation is because you lack truth. And that's why people don't respect you because you don't respect you. That's why people don't love you because you haven't figured out how much he loves you. And once you know how much he loves you, huh, huh, stuff about to change up in here. Because I found out I need to get within the line. And started operating outside of them. How are we doing? Is that all right? Come on. Let's watch this. Let's watch this. It says what? When we lose respect for God, talk to me, read with me. We what? We'll also lose respect for ourselves. See, see here's the thing. What do you mean, Pastor Ted? When I, when I lose respect for God, when you don't believe him. Come on. When his word ain't good enough. Talk to me. When you, need, when you need someone to prove it to you for you to walk in it. Talk to me. Are, are, you, are, you, are you seeing this? See, you don't realize you came from him. You're connected to him even if you don't want to admit it. When you lose respect for him, what does it say? You'll lose respect for yourself. Read me. It says what? Pride will always take you to a place where God is not... Some of us are living our lives outside of his truth. He's not there. He loves you. He's everywhere. But you're living outside of his truth. How we doing? Is this all right? Come on. Here, here's where we're landing today. We, we're talking about five, five classic expressions of pride. And it's so important that we understand this because we've got to find ourselves. Some of us are hiding up in the rafters. Y'all hear me? Some of us are underneath... <laughs> Some of us, uh, we were watching, a, uh, we were watching a, a, a YouTube video, and they were showing, like, like, people doing crazy stuff. Folks was dancing and whatnot, and they, they kept trying to, you know, uh, uh, show the next person up. And all of a sudden, they showed you a truck, and the dude crawled up underneath the truck and started dancing and whatnot. Like, like now, now top that one. That's what some of us are. Some of us are up underneath something, li living lower than he intended. Come on, number one. Y'all remember number one? No, number one was what? For the first classic expression of pride is what? Selfish ambition. Y'all remember this? Come on, let's read it. It says what? I am so preoccupied with my own goals that I have no time to help you. And this is important because selfish ambition. See, see watch this. You weren't even created, you weren't even created to be ambitious. Do you understand? See, you, you were created to carry out someone else's vision. His name is your father. See, and, and, and how many of you know that, that when you're trying to be ambitious, you'll never be satisfied? Because how many of you know that his goal or his vision for your life, Bible says, I hasn't seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into what? into the imagination, the things that God has prepared for you. So when you're so ambitious that you're going to try and do something or be something, you're actually living below his vision for you. And therefore, how do we know? I'm too busy. And you don't even realize 
that God gave you a gift, and if you ever heard this before, that a gift isn't a gift unless you give it away. People, I'm, I'm gifted, and I just sing to myself. I'm gifted, I just lift so I can look at me. I'm gifted so I can just have money and just store it up. Uh-oh, we don't, I, didn't, I didn't hit a sacred cow. Mm. Checking to see if I should go there or not. Holy Ghost. Uh, no. I, I'm only going to do what he tells me to do. I'm not going to cross the lines. Maybe I'll say that in another service. Watch this. It says here, selfish ambition. I'm so preoccupied with my own goals that I have no time to help others. You don't realize that that's why you have time. You have time for others. You don't hear me? You have time for others. You know that when, when God created Adam, he said, he said, look here, I want you to be fruitful, and I want you to multiply, and I want you to replenish the earth. Your life, your time wasn't even made for you. It was made to give your gift to others. And the moment that you get so ambitious that you don't have time to share your time, you'll lose your time. Let's read. It goes on. Because you don't even realize Mercy, time is the mercy of God. Every day you wake, do you, do you realize that you shouldn't have no more time? But every day he gives you time, this is mercy. And he's giving you time so you can figure out it ain't about you. Stop being so ambitious and selfish and fearful that you got to try to get it all done before you leave. Well, guess what? He gave you eternity in order to get it all done. Some of us, being so ambitious, might spend eternity in the wrong place. You don't handle that? It's all good. Watch this. Here it goes. It says what? What? My what? My investment is what is too important. I have to invest it all where? In myself. Come on. The second, second watch this. The second classic expression. Oh, y'all done looked over my shoulder. What is it? It's preoccupation with appearances. Mm -mm. Second classic expression of pride is being preoccupied with appearances. And, and, and from, from the rip, you read that and you think I'm talking about red bottoms and, you know, I think I'm talking about Louis and Uwe bags or, you know, Corvettes and Mercedes. I might be, but I'm really not. Well, what well, this is talking about, now that's connected to but what this is talking about is being preoccupied with other people's eyes. Being preoccupied with what they see and what they might think about what they see. How are we doing? Come on. Come on, let's read. Watch this. Samuel chapter... I done went too fast. Samuel, Samuel. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 30, it says what? And then Saul did what? See, here's a passage of Scripture where, where the Lord uh, made Saul king of everything. And then he told him to do something, and he didn't do it, right? And, and, and the Lord sent the prophet to tell him, yo, man, you done messed up. Get it right or else. Watch this. And, and, here's, and here's what Saul was preoccupied with. Let's read it. It says what? And then Saul... Again, okay, I know I messed up. Okay, I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong, right? What did he say? I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. What did he say? He said, what? But please, baby, baby, please. <laughs> what? It, at least what? It, at least honor me before my peoples. Hmm, you hear me? Yo, yo, people are watching. Okay, I, I know what I did was wrong. Okay, but you know what I'm more concerned about right now? What they think. Can y'all hear me? Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about what he thinks. I'll deal with him later. Right now, I'm more concerned about what they think. So, so watch this. Could you do something false for them? Hear me? Cause, so cause hear what he said. I know I'm wrong, but can you honor me in front of them? Because I'm more concerned about them than him. How we doing? You know, come on. Can, can we make it look like it should look right, even though we know it ain't right? Talk to me. 
Come on, let's read it. It says what? Then Saul pleaded again, what? I know I sinned, but please at least honor me before the elders of my people and before Israel by coming back with me so that I may worship the Lord your God. In other words, you know, I'm going to be religious. See, I don't even know that. that. That's really what religion is. Man's attempt to please God, being acceptable in your sight instead of being acceptable in his. Somebody shout, that's pride. Somebody say, you got outside of the bounds. Hold on, let's read. It says what? Saul was more interested in looking right than being right. <laughs> Come on, guys. I know folks are like, well, you know, well, can we keep wearing a ring? You're divorced. <laughs> and you asked for it. Come on, talk. Come on, look right. Look straight. I mean, if you don't want to be married, stop trying to make it look like we're married. Come on, talk to me. Uh -huh. I'm going to come down the street now. You think I'm just talking about that? You, you know, if you don't want to live for him, stop playing. Jesus said this way. He said, man, y'all know where I'm going. He said, man, I wish I would rather that you would just be buck wild or all in because what you're doing is confusing everybody. It, it, come on, man. It, at least let them know where you're really going. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and see, watch this, and, and that's what we do. When, when we're so concerned, when we're so preoccupied with what everybody's thinking, you're actually missing who you should be really concerned about. Because when you care more about what he thinks than you do what they think, you'll actually start doing what he says. How are we doing? Come on, watch this. It says what? Let's read. It says what? How what? How preoccupied are you with appearances? Read with me. It says what? How worried are you about what other people think about you? Come on, let's read. It says what? Uh-oh, I got excited here. It says what? Read me. It says what? What if God asked you to do something in service or in front of your friends that might make you look stupid? Come on now. Well, you, you know we're prophetical right now because the answer is he already did. The answer is he already did. But don't nobody know because I wasn't going to do it. Y'all hear me? See, and here's the amazing part is that obedience and faith should always look foolish to someone that doesn't believe. Y'all hear me? Obedience and faith should always look crazy. To someone who's not trusting him. Come on, talk to me now. There's a man named Noah that said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend the rest of my life building an ark for the flood. Noah, what's a flood? A flood is when it rains a whole lot and it covers the earth. What's rain? Y'all hear me? God asked Noah to build something for something people had never seen. What if God asked you to do something in a service or in his service in front of your friends that might make you look foolish? Some of you are broke right now. Some of you are depressed right now because there's something he told you to do. And you said, if I do that, I'm not I'm not going to be accepted. I'm going to look foolish. I'm going to be by myself. No, you're by yourself now. You're going to be where he is, doing what he says, getting his results. How are we doing? Is this all right? Come on, let's say, it says what? How, talk to me. How would you, it says what? Would you obey the Holy Spirit? Is your what? Is your spiritual hunger so strong that you would risk looking foolish in the eyes of others to make sure you obeyed God? Come on, I, t I told you my testimony. I spent two years making y'all, I don't know what y'all was doing for two years, but I'm going to tell you for two years, I was sitting in a cube scared. And I knew God told me to start this church. And I was, I was more concerned than what people were going to say than doing what he asked me to do. I know, I know for a fact, and, 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 and my conscience is clear, and I, I repented, but I know for a fact 
that things happened during those two years of my disobedience that didn't have to happen. All because I was more concerned about what somebody thought about my obedience. How are we doing? How many of you know when you just get back in the bounds and believe what he says and you're, you're more hungry for pleasing him than other people? Come on, talk to me. Some of y'all looking around. You're going to find out that you're going to accomplish exactly what you were born to do. How are we doing? We get anything out? Is this helping? Is this helping? All right, come on, let's go. Luke chapter 19, verse 2 through 5. Okay, y'all know I can see everybody. How you been, baby? I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Luke chapter 19, verse 2. I'm glad y'all here. I got I to do that to balance it out. So you think, okay. Luke chapter 19, verse 2 through 5. You ready? It says what? There was what? There was a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus. It says what? He was the chief. Read this slow. What was he? So he was a, he was a tax collector, but somebody say he was the boss. In other words, he had employees, he was rich, he had money, he had status. All the things that stop you, if you're walking in pride, from walking with God. Watch this, it says what? He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become what? Very rich. Let's read, it says what? He did what? He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too what? He was too short to see over the crowd. Man was probably three foot three. Foot three. I mean, I mean, first of all, if you, if, you study, if you study the Bible, they were short already. The average man was like four, five, five foot. You feel me? So if you can't look over a five foot man, you three feet. <laughs> you understand? So, so, so watch this. But, 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 here, but here's what we missed. He was three feet in a crowd of five foot men. But he was looking for the right thing. And the right thing, y'all not hearing me, made him hungry. The right thing made him courageous. The right thing caused him not to care what you thought about him. Come on, let's read. It says what? Read. This is what? This is what? So what did he do? So he ran ahead and he climbed. This little, this little four, three-foot man, he climbed up in a tree beside the road for Jesus while he was going past and just had his feet swinging. <laughs> and look, he's in a tree, his feet swinging, and he's hollering, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, come on now. See, the problem is, is all of you should have your feet swinging, hollering, Jesus, 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 because you need to get his attention but some of us won't let your feet swing or, or your arms wave, uh, wave and holler, Jesus, Jesus, because you're too concerned about what people are going to say about you. It says what? And what? And when Jesus came by, Jesus stopped. And watch this. I really believe before he saw him, he felt him. Oh, come on, guys. Y'all ain't feeling me right now. See, because when you're hungry, people can feel it. Talk to me. See, see, when, when, when you're desperate, people can feel you ain't any, have you know that hungry got a look. Some of y'all got it, some of you don't. It's okay. Come on up. So, some of you look bewildered. <laughs> hungry has a look. And watch this. It's a look. When Jesus came by, he looked up. Watch this. He looked in a place that he wouldn't look for a man. Because he could sense his hunger. Let's read it. It says, watch this. And it says, watch this. He looked up and Zacchaeus, and he called him by his name. He said, Zacchaeus. He said, what? Quick, get down here, boy. He said, watch this. I, come on, y'all not getting this. He said, let me tell you what your hunger did to me, God says. Let, let, let me tell you what, you not caring about what anybody else, because there's only one three-foot man waving his feet in a sycamore tree and a crowd of five-foot men. He says, quick, come down. 
I have to be a guest. You're not hearing this. I got to come where you are. I got to be in your presence. Number three. We're almost out of here. Y'all get anything out of this? Watch this. No, number three is watch this. Oh, y'all wish I didn't flash it up there. Number three, I done, I done, I done blew some people's high. So what was number one? Self-ambition. What was number two? Y'all all done forgot. Preoccupy, preoccupation with what? With appearances. Here's number three, disrespect towards authority. I, you know, I, I know we only got a couple moments, but I got to get this in. Because somebody going to crash if you don't get this. <laughs> Romans chapter 13, verse 7. It says what? It says, render to who? All men their due. Talk to me. It says what? Somebody say, and women. <laughs> we know this is spiritual. Spiritual man and a lady. Let's read. It says what? Render to all men their due. It says what? Pay taxes. What? To whom taxes are due. Let me just help y'all. You know, so if you live in New Jersey, you should pay New Jersey taxes. Okay. All right. I'm reading the word. What? Revenue to whom revenue is due. Watch this. Come here we go. Respect. To whom respect is due, talk to me, and honor, to whom honor is due. Watch this. It says what? It says before God can ever trust a person to be in a position of authority, the person must first learn how to be under authority. Whole bunch of people. Come on, I'm going to mess with you men first. You know, she better submit to me. She better submit to me. She, hey, you better just submit to You better cook my meal. You better, you better wipe my kid's nose. And you better turn the lights off at night. Because the Bible says. Come on, talk. Come on. How we doing? Can, can you handle this, man? But, but the Bible also says the head of every man, not male, there's a difference. There's some males that don't have a head. But it says, but the head of every man is Christ Jesus. And it says, and the head of the woman is the man whose head is Christ. Come on now. See, how... How dare you think somebody's going to give you some authority and you ain't under no authority? Come on. Let's read. Let's read. It says what? what? The real test comes, watch this, when you must submit to someone who's not a good leader. Mm -mm. Okay. I told you I had to get y'all here. Had to get y'all here before y'all go home. Because some of you felt like, well, you know what? You know, he or she is not a good leader, so I don't have to submit. See, you're, you're not submitting to people. You're submitting to the office that God established. Are you hearing me? And, and God blesses those who honor what he set up. Are you hearing me? See, see don't worry about whether they're good or not. You better worry whether you're good or not. Come on, talk to me. See, because some of you don't realize it's all a setup. <sighs> it's all a setup. Because watch this. If their authority is poor and your ability to submit to authority is good, somebody's going to see it. You, you, are you, you, you hear me? Come on, let's read it. It says what? The real test comes when you must submit to someone who's not a good leader or who you, what? Keyword, feel. Because y'all be, be feeling. I love when, uh, when the pastor's here. He says some of y'all got lead poisoning. You know, well, I'm led. I've been led here. I've been led there. I've been, I've been, led, I've been led over there. And, 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 and one, none, of, one of that, none of that lead came from God. That lead, that lead came from you. That's your feelings and your emotions. Because the reality is, if anything, respect the office that they're in. That's it. And, and if they're not doing right, God will sort that out. But, but I tell you what, I tell you what, if they're, if they're not doing what's right and you acting a fool, you know, gossiping, backbiting, popping your gum, 
You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, uh, uh, getting up, bristling up to folks. Well, well, guess what? Wait a second. Okay, hold on. It's two people, both of them wilding. One is in a higher office. Another one is in a lower office. Well, hmm. Well, who am I going to clip first? The joker that is low acting a fool. <laughs> Y'all all right? How we doing? I'm just, I'm just trying to help. Just trying to help you. Watch this. Here, so the real test comes when you must submit to someone who what? Who is not a good leader or who you feel is unqualified. Because sometimes your feelings are wrong and your feelings get you in pride. And you looking at it from the wrong angle. And you're the only one that's feeling the way you're feeling. That's why I say you got lead poisoning. You're being lead and it's poisoning you. First Peter chapter 2, 18, verse 21. We're almost done. Y'all get anything out of this? Helping anybody? Is this helping you? Come on. Let's read it. It says what? Servants, keyword. It's really important because I'm even though servants are under authority. It says what? Servants, what? Be subject to your own masters with what? With all respect. In other words, person under authority have respect to someone with authority. Watch that. It says what? With all respect, what? Not only to the Oh, what is that in the Bible? Oh, so sweet and fast in the Bible. It says what? It says not only what to the good and gentle, but also to the person that is terrible. It's the family church. So I'm gonna say this. Some of you, yo, man, he really sucks. She really sucks. Well, guess what? If I if I watched you long enough, <laughs> I bet you I could find where you suck too. Can y'all can y'all handle that? Watch this. It's a what? It's a what? For what? For this is a gracious thing. What? When mindful of God. See, in other words, when you're not so focused on what she's doing or what he's not doing, and you're more, more focused on your gracious God who has allowed your pretty little self to wake up this morning and even have a job. I know cats ain't got a job. I know folks that wish they had a bad boss. That means they're working. This is a gracious thing when mindful of God. Watch this. It says, one endures sorrow while suffering. Why? Because I'm not even really worried about what I'm going through. I'm more focused about who's gracious to me. Oh, come on, guys. It says what? It says, watch this. It says, for what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? In other words, when you wrong and wrong comes, well, who, who gets the glory out of that? You're wrong. That's why it's happening to you. You're wrong. Watch this. It says what? But if when you do good, come on, come on. Ah, no, I messed up. I told you I had to get you here because you got to go to work tomorrow and somebody's going to get fired if you don't get your attitude together. Then you come to church and say, hey, pastor, can you help? I helped you last night. <laughs> You're trying to steal from folks. <laughs> get your attitude right. Get out of pride. What if you were more humble? What if you were just thankful when you wake up tomorrow? How are we doing? <laughs> we might not have Q&A tonight. Can y'all handle that? We, but we're going to get this word done. It says what? But, but, what? but if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure it, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. I'm almost done. It says what? For what? For to this what? For to this you've been what? You've been called. This is why you're here, y'all. This is why you're here. That's why you're here. You're here you're in that position so someone who doesn't know God can see what the kingdom of heaven looks like. Instead of seeing the world that says they love God act like the world. Y'all hear me? Come on. It says what? For this what? You've been called because Christ has also suffered for you, leaving you an example. Come on. So that what? So that you might follow in his steps. Come on. It says what? It says the fact that there are four. And the authority over you does not exempt you from walking in humility. Here's a cuss word. We cuss a lot at the family church. It says, and submitting, submission. Come on, let's read. It says what? I'm, I'm done. It says what? Colossians chapter 4 verse 1. It says what? I'm, I'm going to flip the script too. It says what? And mass, because some of y'all aren't employees. There's some bosses in here. I see you. you know, some of y'all don't even think you need to make eye contact. You know, you're so high. I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm looking. I'm not telling you. I'm not scared. Some bosses up in here. You know, you're you waiting for me to break my eye contact. I'm not going to break my eye contact. <laughs> I'm 
Told you my name is Theodore. Come on. It says what? And masters, talk to me, you bosses. It says what? Treat your servants considerately. Be fair with them. Don't forget for a minute that you too serve a master. Come on. Who you think you are? Last time I checked, you didn't levitate in them pants. You don't walk on water. The man that walks on water is your master. And so you need to be humble. You need to realize that there's somebody higher than you who loves them just as much as he loves you. Come on. We, we out of here. It says what? How you handle authority on both sides of an issue reveals how prideful, what? Or how humble we really are. A humble person can afford to give honor to others because he or she is secure. Look at this. It says they do not feel diminished when honor is given to others. Pride takes credit. Humility shares it abundantly. Did you get anything out of this? Come on, let's sit.